Hello everyone, welcome back. In this video, we'll be discussing about the third problem of today's bi-weekly contest, maximum or. The problem says that you are given an integer array nums and an integer k. Now, you can do some operation. The operation is you can choose an element and multiply it by 2. Now, you can do this operation at most k times and you have to apply this operation optimally such that the value of this expression nums0 or nums1 or nums2 up to nums n minus 1 is maximum possible right so you have to maximize the or of the entire array by applying this operation at most k times so let's take an example let's say the given array is 12 comma 9 and k is 1 it means you can apply the operation at most one times in other words it means it also means that you can either multiply 12 by 2 or you can multiply 9 by 2 or you can do nothing right so in this case like there are three possible arrays one is 12 comma 9 second is 24 comma 9 and third is 12 comma 18 among all these three 12 comma 18 will give us the bitwise or as 30 and that is the maximum possible bitwise or and hence 30 is the answer right so hope the problem should is clear now how to solve this so let's say this is our new array 19825 and these are the corresponding binary representation this is the representation of 1 9 8 2 and 5 and k is 3 basically we can apply the operation three times now we have to distribute k among n numbers here right basically we need to understand which of these numbers we will apply the operation in and uh, if we try every possible combination it would be somewhere around n plus k c k like not exactly but somewhere around this uh, this number and the value for this would be n factorial so there are n almost like n factorial kind of ways in which we can distribute this k among this n numbers <coughs> sorry So if you do this, you will not be able to be within the time complexity because n itself here is 10 to the power 5. So we need to optimize this. Now what this means, it means that we have to apply the operation without actually trying out every possible combinations. right? So in other words, we have to make some observations. right? Now, what does applying an operation mean? Let's say you are one, you wanted to apply one operation here. So it means you are multiplying this by two. In other words, you are just shifting it by one, or basically one zero zero one would become one zero zero one zero. What does this mean? This in turn means that previously this one was contributing two to the power three to the result. But now this one would contribute two to the power four to the result, right? So basically we are getting more value in the result. Now you might say that, okay, uh, we have one two to the power three, we got one two to the power four. Now let's just try to make one two to the power five as well. So let's say you say that, okay, I will apply operation two times here and this will now contribute two to the power five. Now you will say, okay, I will now try to make two to the power six and so on and so forth, right? But this is not optimal. Why? Because even two to the power n itself is greater than the sum of everything in the left or in the right. For example, let's say there are four bits, right? So one zero zero, one zero and one, basically two to the power three, two to the power two to the power one, even if you sum them all up, the value would be less than 1000, right? So if you sum them all up, this would be 7, right? And this would be 8. So 2 to the power n is actually greater than the sum of everything to the right. So what does this signify? This signify that instead of making 2 to the power 4, 2 to the power 5, and 2 to the power 6, and so on and so forth, we, we should just focus on making one huge number. Or in other words, we should just focus on one number and try to make, try to 
shift this one as left as possible so that it can contribute uh, more to the result right so hope you understand now that we it doesn't make sense to apply this operation on multiple numbers instead we would want to apply this entire three operation on a single number so either we would do this or we would do this or we will apply the operation on the next number or the other number and so on and so forth now which of these number to pick or which of these numbers we will pick to apply the operation on so one obvious choice here could be okay i will apply the operation on the maximum value because that has the maximum left bit and because it has maximum left width i can shift it k times so that it it goes to the maximum position possible right that is true it will go to the maximum position but we only in like we only consider the case for 2 to the power n right we also have to consider the cases after 2 to the power n like we know that we have shifted this to the very right but the same value could have been obtained by shifting this because this also has the same leftmost bit right so if you even if you shift this three times you will get the same contribution of 2 to the power 6 that you will get here right so applying the operation on maximum doesn't make sense so one simple example could be this let's say you have these two numbers right now if you apply the operation here which is the greater number you will be ending up having these two numbers and if you can see there is one overlap here right and the final output would be 11001 right if you do the or similarly if you apply the operation here in that case again the maximum bit is same right which was there here like uh, we have like five bits here and we have five bits here as well but here the overlaps are minimal and because of that the final output has more number of ones right and because it has more number of ones the value here is greater than the value here right so this shows that applying the operation on just the maximum number is something which is not optimal and might might give us uh, non optimal results as well so basically we can't simply apply the operation on the maximum number instead we, what we will do we will try to apply the operation on each and every number and calculate this expression afterwards and see whichever gives us the maximum value and that will be our answer so the pseudo code for that would look something like this we will apply the operation on every i right and after applying the operation we will try to find out the bitwise or of the entire array right so after finding bitwise or so this or would be initialized to this new array i sorry for that so after finding out the bitwise or you will just take the maximum in a variable result and finally this result would give you what is the maximum bitwise or possible right now what is the time complexity of this entire algorithm we have one for loop uh in the for iterating over which element to apply the operation on and then we have one more for loop to find out the bitwise or of in the entire array so the complexity is order n square right but this will not pass because again n is up to the power 5 so we have to reduce this order n square to n log n or order n or something of that sort right now how to do this again this is very similar to the fourth problem of today's contest itself uh, if you have watched this video i would strongly encourage you to pause the video right away and try to optimize this by yourself if you haven't watched this video you can continue watching this video and you can try out the fourth problem by yourself right so here you can see we don't have any i right we have everything as j only thing that is related to i is we have to we we don't have to consider i at all so what we can simply do we can in other words what we can simply say that there are two loops one which iterates over 0 to i minus 1 and second with iterates over i plus 1 to n 
right so these are the two like basically we can divide this entire thing into two parts and now because everything is independent of i here we can pre compute this entire thing before this for loop itself and compute the value here using prefix sum and this entire for loop would then be an order one operation and this order n square would then be reduced to order n right so let's just uh, go through an example to make it bit more clear so this was the array like 19825 now we calculated the prefix or now why prefix or because we need to find out the prefix we need, we need to find out the or of every element in the left of i right so we find out the prefix or so prefix or would be 1 9 and then like again 9 or 8 is again 9 9 or 2 is 11 and so on and so forth so basically we calculated the prefix or now let's say you are calculating the value for this i right so you change this value to from 8 to uh 8 into 2 which is uh, 16 so you change this value to 16 now what you want you want the or of 1 and 9 and you want the or of 2 and 5 so what you can simply do you can simply pick this value this value will give you the or of 1 and 9 or everything up to this particular index right now how to get the or of 2 and 5 notice that you can't simply like or is not commutative basically you can't simply say that okay 15 like uh, 15 minus 9 would give you the or of 2 and 5 or you can't simply say that 15 or 9 or 15 or 0 or 9 would give you the or of 2 and 5 that is not possible and because of this we also need to maintain suffix or so what what we can do we can simply do a suff, like a sim, similar to how we find the prefix or we can simply find out the suffix or so 5 5 or 2 7 7 or 8 15 15 or 9 15 and then 15 or 9 is again 15 so we figure out the prefix, uh, suffix or as well now this value here would give us the or of everything in the right so we got the or of everything in the right of i we got the or of everything in the left of i we can simply do 9 or 7 or 16 and you will get the or of entire array where we have modified this particular 8 right and the similar fashion you will do for every other i and uh this part is simply order one right because uh, you are just referring to a particular index so this entire for loop will now be removed with a simple order one operation and the complexity is now order n right so if you have watched till this point i would strongly strongly encourage you to pause the video and try to code this entire solution by yourself and get it submitted uh, we have discussed all the aspects of the problem already so you should not find it difficult to uh, code it and get it submitted next we'll look at the code so the code is exactly similar to the studio code that we have looked at we have Uh, found the prefix or and the suffix or so prefix or is simply prefix of j minus 1 or nums of j and similarly suffix of suffix or is prefix of j plus 1 or nums of j now after finding these two we will iterate over every possible i and will change that particular position of i so this is the value new, new value of i and we prefix of j minus 1 will give us everything before j suffix of j plus 1 will give us everything or or of everything after j so we got the or of everything before j we got the or of everything after j and we know what is at j so the or of everything will give us the or of entire array with the jth position changed and we'll take just the maximum across all the all such possible j and that will give us the final answer so hope the entire like hope the solution makes sense if you have any doubts in this entire video feel free to post them in the comment section below i would be happy to answer if you like the video give it a thumbs up and do subscribe if you haven't already and i will see you in the next one thank you